guys, what's going on? Welcome to Karnak Temple. Here you will see more than 2,000 years of ancient history. This is one of the oldest temples in the history of the world. So come along. This is our last day in Egypt and I can't wait to see what's inside. This whole tour through Egypt, we have had our, our friend here, Marcelo Palermo, that's going to tell us a little bit about this temple's history. How you doing? Your legs a little iffy there. Okay, yeah, I'm Achilles tendon. <laughs> yeah. Something related to the region and the story. Achilles, you know, was... He's in a lot of pain right now, basically. Here. But we could. We could. <laughs> but it's the last one, so I think you've made it to the end. Absolutely. You know? absolutely. All right. Tell us a little bit about what we have behind us. We are at the Karnak Temple, so a conglomerate of temples, which is one of the most ancient temples in the history of the world. And, of course, here you have have something of the new dynasty. Well, it's an ancient dynasty, but we're talking about the Tutmosis and the Ram Ramses, and also the presence of Queen Hatshepsut. Again. She is present she all over. Again. So, yeah. So she was, let's see if I've learned something, she was the one that opened the trade. Yes. In the world, basically. Indeed. We, Egypt opened its doors to the world in a massive way because of Hatshepsut. Okay. So you did great there. <laughs> I, I learned something at least. Fantastic. <laughs> 2,000 years of architectonic and general history is right here, lies right here behind our backs. So it's an amazing place. We're talking about 2,000 BC all the way to 300 AD. So that is 2,000 years before Christ to 300 years after Christ. And everything is right here behind us. So do we know when they actually discovered it? Like when was it open to the public? Because I'm sure this took a long time to dig up, right? It actually came through times, basically. This was covered, this was dug, and there's another thing also during the Muslim period. When the, the Muslim period started in the 7th century. So here we have two different constructions. As you see, that is an ancient Egyptian construction and this is an old Muslim construction. The idea was that when the Muslims came here, they thought of this place as a heretic place. A place of no good. So what they Wait, heretic? Like, what do you mean? Heretic meaning that it's a place for non Oh, place. okay, okay. So what they wanted to do is to show that they can take stones, material from the old ancient place and build the new, which is something like a little mosque what we have here. Okay. So that's people actually, they were asking. So they were challenging. Here. Yeah, and I actually heard that they were asking some guys and they weren't telling them exactly what this was. But this is a very important thing to differentiate periods. Hmm. This is 700 AD and after. And this is... 2,000, 1,500 years before Christ. So okay. we have it all right here, sum it up. <laughs> all right, guys, come on. Thank you. <laughs> well, my dear. <laughs> my dear, he said my dear. <laughs> the inside parts of the temple and as you see you have colossus here those guys with the what's, a, what's the a colossal it's a guardian it's a guardian a big okay. guardian a giant guardian some of them represent pharaohs or figures uh, prominent figures of ancient egypt like the one outside who's ramses actually okay. the dynasty it will be ramses the second actually who by the concept of many uh, egyptian historians you know he was the greatest pharaoh ever to live Okay. I will disagree a little bit. I will go more with Ramses III, but uh, because I'm a fan of architecture. <laughs> I don't know. It kind of makes me feel like we're in a place of maybe giants. Right? Yeah. It, it, it feels like that. It, it feels, feels like that. Like and, and actually, we are because these guys are still here. 
Yeah, that's true. And they true. are giants. And it, and it also gives me a feeling of like a mummy because their legs are united. And the position, and exactly. And the position, right? But that in ancient Egypt, actually, and that's why, uh, that's why actually they, they mummified bodies like that. Uh -huh. That was a position of guard. That was actually oh. a salute. Like this and like this. Okay. Basically, you're talking about the heart, the soul, you're embracing your task. Okay. If you see many of uh, uh, the images or the projected images of uh, what it was Anubis, for example, Anubis, and uh, you know the I main the Anubis. Anubian, yeah, you, you, I know that you have a, a particular interest with Anubis. <laughs> yeah. You know, you will see them guarding tombs and sacred places in this position, and they will salute like this as well, meaning hmm. that they will embrace their task with all their heart and soul. So it seems appropriate that if we keep going, absolutely. Well, and let's embrace our task. <laughs> The person in the middle is actually two persons, his wife and his daughter, right here. Right below his reproductive organs. It has a symbolism. It means that Ramses gives life, projects life.
so I was wondering why their head is like that and um, we learned a fun fact. Yeah, fun fact indeed. Some of them, in the case of the pharaohs, is a symbol of power and grandeur. But most people would use those kind of what we now would know as hats, basically back in the day, you know. It was hot, it was really, really hot. And those hats will keep like uh, humid, wet, say, around a towel inside. And Guys, I know you're not here, but you're kind of here, but this is night. Imagine how heavy it was to build something like this. And he only had part of his leg up to his knee, so this was just humongous. It's unbelievable. I literally feel like I'm walking in the city of the giants. <laughs> So we've been talking about um, Hachetsu so much that we finally see what she looked like. Look at this. She's right here. generation perspective what did you think this is so so amazing <laughs> I, I don't think the, the the people who live here were human like us they, they are they are so my mom's become a millennium because she, she's filming just like everybody else but uh, yeah you enjoyed Egypt I enjoyed a lot yeah happy mom Happy, Happy daughter. Mom. Happy <laughs> daughter.
All right, guys, it has been a pleasure visiting Egypt. What better than to say goodbye with our Queen Hachitsu here. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of visiting Egypt. And I must say, personally, thank you to all those people that we ran into here, all those Muslims, Egyptians, locals that made this trip so special and really gave us a feel of what Egypt is all about. You'll be in our hearts forever. And this trip wasn't only just uh, to film or for tourism. It actually ended up being something more than that, a spiritual journey. Um, I'm leaving Egypt with an amazing energy. I definitely recommend, like I've been saying throughout this whole video, this is one of the nucleus of energy in the world. So definitely come here and charge, uh, charge up your good vibes and uh, take them with you. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you, everybody. And we will see you next time. Stay positive. decided to buy this huge one meter sphinx, uh, not sphinx, sorry, a newbie statue. And uh, I need a suitcase to take it. So um, yeah, the market is gonna be interesting. Now one fun fact for you, if you say you're American, they will ask for money. If you say you're European, they will ask for money. Asian, ask for money. But if you say you're from Argentina, they just will ask you to play football. <laughs> so if you speak Spanish, Say for you for you're from Argentina. <laughs> I think it's because they just uh, figure you don't have money. So, <laughs> all right, guys, this is gonna be interesting. Let's go. So, fun fact: Karnak Temple is there, and Luxor Temple is there. So they're positioned in the straight line. big suitcase so because I only travel with one like this and I'm gonna have to travel back with one like this <laughs> so we'll put the statue in here hopefully it'll be safe <laughs> hello okay so they wanted to charge me $250 for a suitcase I'm never gonna use again and <laughs> my friend here got it for $40 so yeah <laughs> welcome the street now. <laughs> so there goes the suitcase where the Anubis is going to go protect it. Go to home. West Bank. Go to West Bank. Go West motor boat now. Party go to West Bank. Yeah. And get the statue. This is very, very beautiful. <laughs> this is best. Alrighty, we are going back to the Alabasha store that we came the first day to Luxor. Here we have the gang, and um, I'm gonna get my movie. So we brought the boat, walking in the streets of Luxor. 